The ex-gunner McCready. I actually met him once before. I doubt he remembers me, though. We mungos all look alike. How wonderful. Someone new. Is it true you're from one of those vaults? I met a few of your kind once before back in D.C. Charming people. Badly dressed, but charming all the same. You don't like these clothes? Seriously? Well, I wouldn't be caught dead in them. But lucky for you, I hear you're quite good at staying alive. Tell me about yourself. What's your story? Oh, you don't want to ask that question, darling. When a woman's lived for over 200 years, they've been a great many people. I've been an heiress, a salvager, a mercenary, and a fool. I feel it's far better to be the latter of the four. It makes it easier to relate to the common man. How'd you end up here? I'm here on business. A man thinks I'm better off dead. I beg to differ. Right now, he's waiting for me in some dusty hideout with a full staff of gunners. I hope to match him gun for goon. Anything I can do to help? Yes, there is. Perhaps you'd be interested in being my personal goon. Or gun, if you prefer. And in exchange, I will be yours. It doesn't matter who plays what role first. Just say the word and I'm right behind you. Let's go. Our enemies are as good as dead, darling. Hey. As part of the deal, Barnaby and I will both carry holotapes with our half of the combination. Technically, for him, it's his last will and testament, since he's leaving everything to me. Excuse me. By the way, I've marked the location on your map. I'm awful with electronics, so let's hope it was the right place. I'll leave the particulars to your discretion. Better if it's someone who's detached from the situation. What's this all about? Well, it used to be about money. Now it's about principle. I own half the combination to a private safe. A fortune our family has been fighting over for centuries. But a month ago, I got a letter inviting me to the Commonwealth from a man who claimed to be my brother. Rather interesting, considering he's dead. That does sound interesting. Yes. The word Boston tipped me off. Only someone as stubborn as Barnaby would refuse to call it the Commonwealth. Now I've tried reconciliation, but unfortunately my brother wants no part of it. Which makes this story all the more believable, considering our history. Long story short, it's a sibling rivalry, except with more violence. Because unlike the wasteland, some things never get old. On the contrary, they only get worse. We should be careful. Family reunions in my house tend to start with bullets and end with blood. Of course, in between there's arguments, dancing, and champagne. To be honest, I'm not sure which is more dangerous. Well, let's see. It appears this isn't Barnaby at all. In fact, it's my older brother, Arthur. Hard to be sure, given he's a ghoul, but I can tell by the eyes. They're incredibly pretentious. We should search the body for a hollow tape. The letter said the combination would be on that. Intelligence. 
was a bose of mine, how stupid she could be. Either way, congratulations. You've won. Perhaps it would have been easier if we just shared the world like father intended, instead of trying to outlive each other through various means. In the end, we outlive society itself. I take comfort knowing you'll be stuck forever in this awful, decrepit place. Heads up. Go ahead. So, that's why he insisted on holotapes. Even in death, Arthur found a way to get the last word. I loved that about him, as much as I despised everything else. But I am sad that he's gone. He was family, after all. Which means the infection I suffered in D.C. has yet to subside. Maybe you should find a doctor. I'm afraid modern medicine can't cure the disease of caring. Well... Either that, or the stim packs I've been using are defective. But I'm long past the days when I saw it as a sin. In any case, we need to find out who killed him and why. Why the glum face? I thought random murder was routine around here. Huh. I'm just as surprised as you are. I'm beginning to wonder who I am, and what I've done with the real Audrey. In fact, the last time I saw one of my siblings, I almost waved hello. Fortunately, my insanity lasted only until the first bullet grazed my neck. What do we do now? One thing we won't do is give up. If Arthur's dead, that means someone killed him, and that person had to have a motive. Granted, that list might be infinite, so it's best we start at the top. What do you think happened to him? If I had to venture a guess, I'd say this is Margaret's work. You can tell by the lasers and dead robots. And if Margaret's really alive, perhaps you'll want to work together. My sister would know this, of course. See if you can't find another clue somewhere. Hopefully with an address and directions. It's strange how things from the old world are valued. The phrase, rags to riches, takes on an entirely new meaning. Look alive. Drink this. You look a little parched. I found this old photo. Ah, I know the place in the picture. A pre-war cafe for dilettantes and socialites, and a post-war nightclub for hustlers and scavs. Old enough to feel safe, but new enough to be dangerous. That's my sister for you. One step ahead with two left feet. Well, we shouldn't keep her waiting. Let's go. Keep your wits about you. This is, in all likelihood, a trap. Perhaps I'll wink if it's time to start shooting. <clears throat> yes, my dear. Any words of wisdom? In my sister's mind, I suppose killing Arthur was a peace offering. She must think I still hate him. Just curious what you're thinking. Mornings are the absolute worst. I recommend we sleep through them. It would be nice to know more about you. Sure, why not? I haven't traveled with anyone since I left D.C., so it's nice to have someone to confide in. What were you doing in the Capital Wasteland? I was looking for my brother Barnaby. That's where he ostensibly died. On the way, I met a few people in blue jumpsuits. One of them saved my life. The other gave it meaning. But that's a story for another time. Come on, tell me the whole story. Who were you before all this? You're a persistent one, aren't you? I like that. As I said before, a ghoul's life story isn't a novel. It's more like a library. But who knows? In time, perhaps I'll find a moment to loan you a book. 
What's it like, you know, being a ghoul? Well, that mostly depends on what kind of human you were. If you were vain, I imagine it would be full of self-loathing. Me, I'm incredibly vain. That's all for now. Of course, my dear. So here you are. This bar was a nice choice. Maudlin, but nice all the same. <laughs> You'd be amazed how little this neighborhood has changed. The bombs may have dropped, but the dirt is still here. And you were never one to avoid getting your hands dirty. In fact, you're looking much better than Arthur these days. Looking's not as good as having honey. It never is. I suppose the question is whether you want it all for yourself, or if you want to do this together. I do, actually. Then it's time you dropped this ruse. After all, you're far too nice to pass for my sister. You, on the other hand, with that disgruntled look, as if the world were too small and you had to slouch to fit inside it. That I recognize. You're as perceptive as ever, Audrey. And still a huge bitch. Takes one to no one. Is this a new body? Well, new in the relative sense. I wasn't aware since came in vintage models. Why do you think I chose it? It helps sell the illusion. Not that I needed it. Arthur would never deign to make eye contact with the help. So, you've been working for him? Naturally. I let him collect the combination, then waited for my opportunity to take it. After all, our brother would never agree to working together. He'd call it surrendering to father's idealistic garbage. He also yeah, wouldn't trust either of us not stock. to kill him. That too. In fact, I, I believe his favorite saying was, that isn't water under the bridge. Yes, I imagine it was something much thicker. And he was right, as it turns out. So, why not do the same to me? Because yeah, I've always liked you, Audrey. I couldn't stand to be around you, but that's not the same thing. And best of all, I know working together would piss our brother off to no end. All right. But if we're going to work together, my friend here is coming along. He's quite capable. Still don't trust me, do you? All right, fine. Your friend can come. The two of you can meet me at the old summer estate. It's time to find out once and for all what legacy father left us. What is it, my dear? Any other advice? There was a time when the idea of friendships would feel outlandish. But then I met someone in the capital wasteland who taught me to keep an open mind. So perhaps this little soiree is the start of something more. No, never mind. I never do. What have you been up to, sister? Still shooting raiders for kicks? Yes, but not intentionally. Nowadays, they just force my hand. And you? Oh, the same old. Forever building the better mousetrap, as you like to call it. And have you caught many mice with this contraption of yours? I've caught enough. Watch yourself around Audrey. She's not as smart as she sounds. How did Barnaby die, anyway? Arthur assumed you killed him. He was dead before I even got the chance. Antoinette, on the other hand, is another story. The truth is, she gave me no choice. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. The girl killed herself. We all know she belonged in Parsons. Father just didn't have the heart to commit her.
Here we are, the old summer home. It's just as tacky as I remember it. Who cares? The terminal for the code's on the wall there. My number's 47. All right. I'll enter the full code now. What is it you think we'll find, anyway? I don't know. Gold, jewels, baseball cards. Could be anything. The old man was secretive. We must have had different fathers. The one I remember would go out of his way to tell you about his exploits. Only when he was drunk. That should do it. Shall we? Congratulations on entering the safe room. Your father would have been very pleased you managed to make it this far. Of course, there's no guarantee the five of you work together, and as such, further proof is needed. You can't be serious. As you'll note, there Only are five rooms in this house, each with a self-contained test designed specifically for the five of you. Pass them all, and you unlock the main safe. Except there's only two of us here. Don't bother. It's a recording. It's a miracle this piece of scrap even functions after all this time. Now go forth, sirs and madams, and reap the rewards that can only come from working together. So, the entire house is a safe. I assume cracking our puzzles will be easy. The rest will take some ingenuity. We'll have to act like our siblings. Or, even worse, think like them. I'll leave that to you and your friend. You were always mocking everyone's mannerisms. Perhaps that might pay off here. Well, I assume the kitchen will be Barnaby's. He was a fine chef. God only knows why he chose to have his servants cook for him instead. Arthur's test will likely be the stage room. He always enjoyed a good play. Antoinette's, I assume, will be in her bedroom. Something violent, I presume. Mine likely involves some sort of robotics or science experiment, so I'll head over to the lab. We can meet up when we're done. Please proceed to the next phase. You've got your job and I've got mine. We can meet up when it's over. Squirrel stew. It's a joke, really. Barnaby called father a squirrely man and cooked it for him without ever telling him the contents. I never really knew if father liked the stew or not, or if he knew what Barnaby was up to. I suppose in the end he didn't care. He just wanted to spend time with his son. But enough sentiment. The recipe should be here somewhere. Some ingredients might no longer exist. as well as some measurements, so we can't be sure the wasteland recipe is the same. The original recipe might have included tomatoes and potatoes. A hybrid of that would work, but half a potato and half a tomato aren't one of either. No, that doesn't seem to be right. Hopefully, the Mr. Handy hasn't noticed we made the wrong stew. Congratulations, Barnaby. You've passed your portion of the test. Please proceed to the next phase. Arthur's test. The show starts when we step off the stage. All right. So, what will this test be? I'd assume it'd be the bar, or something from that time period. For this test, you will need to perform the play, The Silver Shroud. Of course. It would have to be a comic book. Arthur memorized them all because he knew it would bother me to no end. Unfortunately, I'll need you to read the lines, darling. I couldn't possibly do it justice. Don't worry. If you get stuck, just spout out the most incomprehensible nonsense you can think of, and you'll be fine. What, stranger? Can't you see I'm busy selling drugs to kids? Peddling poison to kids, are we? 
You have taken your last life, villain. I don't think so. I can poison as many children as I want and no one can stop me. Because in Boston, the mob owns the police. Your crimes have gone unpunished for too long. But today, you face the Silver Shroud! Ah, the Dark Dick himself. I thought you'd be taller. And if you think someone as short as yourself can stop me, then you're as foolish as the human who designed that getup. Fuck you. Response not recognized. Aborting program. It is not wise to stand between the Silver Shroud and righteous justice. Ah, but there's another thing standing between you and justice. This helpless child, Timmy. And if you want to punish me, you'll have to kill him to do it. For I've taken him hostage. You shield yourself behind an innocent. You are craven. And you shall fall before me. We'll see about that. I am the instrument of justice, and I cannot fall. Death has come for you, evildoer, and I am its shroud! Congratulations, Arthur. You passed your portion of the test. Please proceed to the next phase. It looks like that did the trick. And just in the nick of time. Any longer and I would have shot you myself. Please proceed to the next phase. A cozy little hideout like this might fetch quite the price on the open market. Antoinette had anger issues. She reminds me of a feral ghoul. Or rather, ghouls remind me of her. If you're ready to start the test, press the button on the wall there. Your Geiger counter seems to have lost its mind, which means we have to work quickly. We'll have to think like my sister. Destroy everything to do. So that's Congratulations, Antoinette. You passed your portion of the test. Please proceed to the next phase. That's all the tests. Let's see how Margaret's doing. Congratulations, Antoinette. You've passed your... your portion of the test. Please proceed to the next phase. That's all the tests. Let's see how Margaret's doing. Well, I hope these ladies didn't cause you too much trouble. They're not ladies. They're machines. And I'm sure disabling them was as simple as pressing 300 buttons. At least that much. Not that you'd understand anyway. Regardless, it looks like all that's left is your room. I can't wait to see what horrors await inside. Don't worry, Margaret. I doubt it's anything I haven't shown you already. Not that you are paying attention. Let's go. What's this? A room with a holotape? I just had to disable three Assaultrons before they ripped me to shreds, and this is all that's waiting for you? What is it, my dear? Just curious what you're thinking. Men are like cigarettes. They can be a pleasure, but they'll kill you in the process. That was all I had. Congratulations, Audrey. 
You passed your portion of the past years. The door to the safe is open. I've watched my five I children do nothing but squabble and Should fight. Listen to the holiday. Yes, it's just perhaps the fault is mine. Anything made for you, I have no interest in exposing myself to. Teach them the value to. of family. However, even now, as I lay sick day. and die, I feel it is not too late for them and for me. Over the past decade, while seeking to prolong my life, I have discovered something far more valuable than wealth and fortune. Yet despite all its promises, I will not, cannot give this gift to my children. Not as they are now. Audrey, you've always had a so, gift with words. So this is your test. Make peace with your mm -hmm. siblings and help them make peace with each other. Watch over them good times and bad, but this is only the first step in a long and arduous journey. But if you make that journey together, I believe the five of you can strip immortality of its curse. Clearly, you were so Apart, impressed with my wit, I've left you it it a completely fate speechless. Worse than death. Sir, the doctors are ready. You gotta be kidding me. All this work for a single vial? Let's not jump to conclusions. Father was nothing if not a predictable man. This vial is a special serum developed by a friend of your father's. Contained inside are the secrets of immortality itself. Immortality? <laughs> well, this is a fine joke. You don't say. I suspected the prize was worthless, but it's even worse than that. It's ironic. I am sorry to interrupt your joyous celebration, but I must inform you that I have now fulfilled my duties as guardian of your father's estate. Good luck to all of you. Well, I suppose it's not a total loss. I'll take that vial, thank you very much. Really, Margaret? It's a serum that grants you immortality. It might as well be a state-of-the-art television for all the good it'll do. It may not be worth anything to us, but it's worth something to somebody which makes it a valuable commodity all the same. Ah, so you did more than disable those assaultrons. You reprogrammed them. There really was no need. If Sir? I wanted to kill you, Margaret, I assure you, my friend over here could. You're all talk, you know that? It's funny. Arthur said you were street smart, that you were the one person who couldn't be swayed by sentiment. And in the end, you just gave me your half of the combination. You'll find I've given you much, much more. That is, if you ever bother to look. Huff. Goodbye, sister. Don't spend it all in one century. Ambush. Defensive protocols engaged. No order. <laughs> Listening. Well, that was gruesome. Did I give the go-ahead to kill her? I don't remember winking. It might just have been something in my eye. It had to be done. It was them or us. Margaret would agree. She was always thinking in binary. She couldn't see that it could have been both. As for the prize, it appears that Margaret missed the boat entirely. The real value was in my father's words. Immortality doesn't have to be dreadful, provided you spend it in good company. But perhaps that's me growing soft again. Luckily, you're here to teach me to shoot first and apologize later. In fact, I think traveling with you will be quite the education. Hopefully you feel the same. It was an accident. She got caught in the crossfire. Well, that's nearly as bad as an excuse as my trigger finger slipped. But I hired you for your gun, and not your tongue. And while I'll miss my sister, it's not as if she's without blame. 
As for the prize, it appears that Margaret missed the boat entirely. The real value was in my father's words. Immortality doesn't have to be dreadful, provided you spend it in good company. But perhaps that's me growing soft again. Luckily, you're here to teach me to shoot first and apologize later. In fact, I think traveling with you will be quite the education. Hopefully, you feel the same. <laughs> it might just have been something in my eye. Being glib. No, I'm afraid you've just started. But if you're referring to this task, then yes, it's done. As for the prize, it appears that Margaret missed the boat entirely. The real value was in my father's words. Immortality doesn't have to be dreadful. I'm sorry, but she deserved to die. No need for apologies. You did what you needed to do. If not for your quick action, we might both be dead. As for the prize, it appears that Margaret missed the boat entirely. The real value was in my father's words. Immortality doesn't have to be dreadful, provided you spend it in good company. But perhaps that's me growing soft again. Luckily, you're here to teach me to shoot first and apologize later. In fact, I think traveling with you will be quite the education. Hopefully, you feel the same. Hey. I feel like my old self, thanks to you. Uh, <clears throat> what is it, my dear? Just curious what you're thinking. They say music is the language of the soul and dancing its heartbeat. Nothing else for now. You gotta be kidding me. All this work for a single vial? Let's not jump to conclusions. Father was nothing if not a predictable man. This vial is a special serum developed by a friend of your father's. Contained inside are the secrets of immortality itself. Immortality? <laughs> well, this is a fine joke. You don't say. I suspected the prize was worthless, but it's even worse than that. It's ironic. I am sorry to interrupt your joyous celebration, but I must inform you that I have now fulfilled my duties as guardian of your father's estate. Good luck to all of you. Well, I suppose it's not a total loss. I'll take that vial, thank you very much. Really, Margaret? It's a serum that grants you immortality. It might as well be a state-of-the-art television for all the good it'll do. It may not be worth anything to us, but it's worth something to somebody. Which makes it a valuable commodity all the same. Ah, so you did more than disable those assault drones. You reprogrammed them. There really was no need. If I wanted to kill you, Margaret, I assure you, my friend over here could. You're all talk, you know that? It's funny. Arthur said you were street smart. That you were the one person who couldn't be swayed by sentiment. And in the end, you just gave me your half of the combination. You'll find I've given you much, much more. That is, if you ever bother to look. Huh. Goodbye, sister. Don't spend it all in one century. I'm listening. No, never mind. I never do. Well, that ends that. I appreciate the restraint you showed. Margaret may not have had a high opinion of me. But in time, she may realize what she really gained from all this. Whatever. Are we done? Being glib. No, I'm afraid you've just started. But if you're referring to this task, then yes, it's done. Regardless, I'd say poor Margaret left the real prize behind. It's a lesson I learned in D.C. Immortality doesn't have to be dreadful, provided you spend it in good company. In fact... Given your knack for pacifism, I think traveling with you will be quite the education. Hopefully, you feel the same. Not a problem. 
I take care of my friends. Then, what I've lost in the sister, I've gained in the friend. Blood relations are overrated, anyway. But enough with the hugs and kisses. You have work to do, right? Then let's do it. What happened between you two? Well, a better question would be, what happened between you five? The five of us played each sibling against the other, like a game. In the end, we forgot who hated whom and why. Regardless, I'd say poor Margaret left the real prize behind. It's a lesson I learned in DC. Immortality doesn't have to be dreadful, provided you spend it in good company. In fact, given your knack for pacifism, I think traveling with you will be quite the education. Hopefully, you feel the same. Fine. I confess I may have mistaken your helpfulness for actual camaraderie. My mistake. But I still have a bargain to fulfill after all, so I'll gladly follow you if you need me. Hey. Just say the word. What is it, my dear? Margaret may not have had a high opinion of me, but in time she may realize what she really gained from all this. What do you mean by that? Well, when I say she gained something, I don't mean her sister's love. Let's not go that far. But I will say she gained my tolerance. Regardless, I'd say poor Margaret left the real prize behind. It's a lesson I learned in D.C. Immortality doesn't have to be dreadful, provided you spend it in good company. In fact, given your knack for pacifism, I think traveling with you will be quite the education. Hopefully, you feel the same. Of course. Traveling with you is never dull. And more than murder and theft, being dull is quite possibly the worst crime I can imagine. So I'm pleased to hear my case won't be going to trial. But enough with the hugs and kisses. You have work to do, right? Then let's do it. You did the right thing. She isn't worth dying for. Or killing for. Yes, I knew that already. The question was whether the inheritance was of any value to her. Regardless, I'd say poor Margaret left the real prize behind. It's a lesson I learned in D.C. Immortality doesn't have to be dreadful, provided you spend it in good company. In fact, given your knack for pacifism, I think traveling with you will be quite the education. Hopefully, you feel the same. Glad to have you with me. And I'm glad you agree. While this began as a bargain, I'd like to think this is more than a little quid pro quo. I suppose time will tell. Hey. Just say the word. Hey there. Yes, my dear. Any other advice? Life is full of censorship. If I met a random stranger, I couldn't spit in his eye, and I damn sure as hell couldn't show him my breasts. But I can put a bullet in his brain. That much is allowed. The question is why. Your thoughts? I don't like thieves, but I'm not against giving a first-time offender a slap on the wrist. I just make sure to use a machete. No, never mind. I never do. Hey. I'm bored, darling. Let's go dancing.